And now, it's that time of the week once again. Welcome to the Departure Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Steve Waldridge. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to episode number. I've not even put the graphic up. That's how amateur this is. Let's do this. There we go. Episode number 73 uh, of the Departure Lounge Live uh, here on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel. I hope you are well. Um, We'll go straight... um, We'll go yeah straight into the show. My name is Tom Whittle. I'm the host for this evening. And uh, joining me this evening... um, as he always does, unless he's very, very busy. Hopefully his internet's holding on. He is at the moment. Uh, Steve Waldridge. Steve, a very good evening to you. Um, and how are you this evening? Yeah, hi, Tom. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm suffering uh, technical issues. It keeps booting me, so bear with me. I'll uh, have to keep coming and going, but we'll uh, we'll get through it, I'm sure. Everything good with you, Tom? Yes, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, just like I say, we- weekend again just always goes by very, very quickly. So, yeah, yeah. all good. All good here. Uh, have you had a good weekend? Yeah, I, I got me a new car last week after my last one failed quite spectacularly. So I've been giving that a little blast out. Personal things have gone very nicely this weekend. So that's uh, that's all good. So, yeah, that's uh, it's all looking rosy at the moment. Fantastic. Yeah, very good. Um, just a quick comment that's come in there from uh, from from uh, Max Jet TV Live Express by Max Woodman, whose name always gets longer every week. Uh, have my glasses gone again, Tom? No, I can't find them. I've had a look, can't seem to find them. Don't know where they've gone. So I'm going glassesless this evening because I'm a rebel. But the good news <laughs> is I'm looking better looking to Tom tonight, so it's a plus side for him. Yeah, and it's a sight for sore eyes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wonderful. certainly. All right, fantastic. We'll bring you back very, very shortly. Providing you're still here, of course. Yeah, yeah, certainly, yeah. (laughs) We'll bring you back shortly. Okay. Uh, And, of course, joining us this evening, uh, who, you know, very nervous, but I'm sure everyone will give her a nice welcome, uh, the newest member uh, to the Departure Lounge team, especially the moderating team. uh, It is, of course, uh, Caitlin Leary. Mm -hmm. Caitlin, very good evening to you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, it's really good to be here. It's all right, you don't have to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not no, lying. no, that's all right. No, very well. Yeah, very happy to have you here. How has your weekend been? It's been really good, thank you. Yeah, been up to much at all? Um, not really, just um, spent the weekend with my grandparents. Yeah, good fun. Yeah, it was really good fun, <laughs> thank you. Awesome stuff. Right, let's bring back. Uh, well, we'll do it in a second. I'm always behind. Here we go. Steve. Steve is back. All right, everyone say hello. All right, my lovely. How are you doing? <laughs> hello. You got everyone. the accent in there. Good lad. Yeah. Awesome stuff. All right. So. Yeah, good. It's going to be a good show. Yeah, we'll, we'll be gentle with you. Don't worry. <laughs> you'll be all right. You'll be fine. I'm just going to move that around there. There we go. Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Right. Okay. So uh, before we go into uh, tonight's show, uh, we'll do a little bit of housekeeping. So we are on social media. Uh, you can find us on the socials uh, in the description below or throughout the evening. Our wonderful mod, Gail, uh, will put them into the chat for you to find. You can, all, like I say, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and Twitter. You can also find the link to our merch in the uh, description below as well, uh, of course, which will also be put in the chat as the evening goes on. Uh, we also have a blog which uh, Gail will also advertise. She's going to be a very busy lady this evening. Uh, She'll advertise that in the chat uh, as well. So if you fancy having a a piece uh, in the blog, uh, 
uh, you can contact Gail uh, and she'll guide you in the right direction. Um, also this evening, if you wish to join us on the show, like Caitlin and many other guests that we have lined up, uh, do get in touch with us uh, via social media uh, and uh, we'll get you on to the show as soon as we can. I'm sure there's other things, but I probably can't think of them right now. Um, so They'll come to you. <laughs> they'll come to you throughout the evening, I'm sure. It's been a long weekend in a way but yeah so uh so yeah right let's get into the chat say hello to the wonderful people that have joined us uh this sunday evening so jim gemmel as ever uh evening to you he says oh god bad enough we have to suffer caitlin is in the chat now we have to suffer on screen <laughs> <laughs> p.s evening folks uh, that's a bit mean now yeah naughty <laughs> naughty that is not very naughty but uh good evening to uh good evening to you uh good evening to clive uh everly who's in the chat uh, as well, uh, of course, Marion as well saying good luck, Caitlin. Uh, lots of people saying good evening. Who else have we got? We got Rob Brown playing spotting says good evening, troops. Evening to you. Thank you for joining us once again. Uh, Lynn Keeble says hello. So good evening to you. Uh, zero one tasker zero one must find out what his proper name is rather than just reading that out. Evening, everybody, the mods and the presenters. Evening to you, uh, Jack R. Fair enough. Uh, it says, hey, everybody. So evening to you. Hey. Uh, Leah Beaumont says, good luck, Caitlin. Lots of people wishing you luck at the moment. Which <laughs> is always good. Uh, Transatlantic Allison, of course, big hello to you for joining us this evening. So uh, hello yeah. to you. Good evening. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do that because that might be a different language before we recognize it. Uh, but yeah, this person says, hi, Caitlin, I am Alistair. <laughs> fair enough. Well, yeah, <laughs> fair even Alistair, hope doing well, yeah. Yeah, fair enough, <laughs> fair play. Uh, if you have, so I'll just quickly put this out there now. Uh, if you haven't, of course, subscribed to the channel and you are new here, uh, do consider giving us a subscribe. It, it does help the channel out massively. Uh, of course, we are very much expecting to get our one dislike from one very bored person so if you are watching or if not watching and you've given it a dislike thank you so much that helps the channel out as well so you're actually not harming it you're doing it good um <clears throat> and uh, yeah so um we also uh voluntary of course you don't have to but we are uh, of course accepting the likes of super chats so if you wish to uh, sort of support the channel and show us a little bit of love um with however much you, you might want to uh, drop us you can so uh, so yes yeah, so, so do consider that right let's go into the show so caitlin uh of course the newest member uh to our uh wonderful team that we have for those who may not know or may not have seen the blog that has your piece in there um tell everybody a little bit about yourself um so i've been studying um travel and tourism in college i've just finished um I studied level three national extended diploma in travel and tourism, which I'm getting my results on the 18th. Um, I'm going to university in September, hopefully, and I will be um, studying BA honours, um, international tourism management with air travel. Oh, wow, fantastic. Have you got a, a preference to what university you'd like to go to yet? Um, I'm going to hopefully get into um, Buckinghamshire new, new University in High Wycombe. Oh uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. So, once you've sort of gone through your, what's what's sort of the end goal? What what would you sort of fancy doing within the industry? Um, I fancy um, going into being cabin crew. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. Have you got a a, a particular airline you're sort of uh, looking up, or or you, what happens when you get there? And um, there's a few in mind. I have like Emirates, Gulf Air, just sort of, like the premium airlines. <laughs> oh yeah, you could become any anything to do with Virgin Atlantic. You could become uh, Alison's boss. She's just put it in the uh, yeah in the chat there, so you could you could tell her what to do, and uh, <laughs> you could be a, a senior management look. <laughs> Not a bad option. Not a bad option. Yeah, I'm sure she'd take it well. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, so what sort of draws you to the likes of uh, Emirates and um, and Gulf Air to sort of, why not sort of, you know, the, I suppose the easy, easy jets and Ryanair's of the world? Um, 
I've always been drawn to um, long haul airlines. Um, it's just always been a passion of mine to go into the um, long haul. Um, go to the long haul airlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fantastic. I know your your mum's uh, the three eighty, and that is a. Is there any particular airline yeah. you sort of aircraft you look at and go, oh, I really fancy sort of working on board that particular one? Um, I have thought about um the three eighty, but I also like the other airlines like um the Dreamliners. Uh, yeah, that no, would be awesome. Your mum would be after uh, cheap cheap flights, I'm sure. If you uh, <laughs> if you get get the dream sorted and that, we'd have yeah. to go up for uh, extra legroom seats and the like. Absolutely. So be a right now. She'll be like, get some cheap tickets, and you can turn around and be like, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she'll be turning left when she's about asking straight in the first class. So you'll have to uh, turn yeah, her out to the back of the plane. Look, yeah. that'll be your first no, job. No, no special privileges. <laughs> Off you go back to economy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Drop, drop her food on her lap for her just to uh, just to prove a point in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear this? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah fantastic awesome. oh, that'd be really good how long are you expecting to be there for is it three year course is it um yeah so three year course in university oh yeah fantastic so yeah, that'd be really uh that'd be really good and once you sort of done like the the, the air cabin crew so you sort of look at any other any sort of any other bits of it or is that sort of of what your heart's set on at the moment um at the moment it's cabin crew but um like alison just said in the chat i was thinking about um piloting yeah no if you don't follow her on um on your person to to chat to about women in aviation and and how to get your foot in the door a little bit especially if you want to progress on to being a pilot i think she'd, she'd be really helpful and it'd be a, a, a really good kind of contact yeah, certainly give her a shout because I'm, I'm, she'd support you no end. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. She'll um, she'll give you the right steps, I think, as well. Because I think when we had her on the show, uh, you know, she was you know very very open with a lot of her, you know, how to get into the industry, how she got into the industry, etc. So, yeah, always worth always worth hitting her up and you know getting a, a sort of a, you know no harm in getting a bit of advice from 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 somebody who's who's doing it. That's it. Yeah, not to talk yeah. you out of the uh, the cabin crew job, obviously to begin with, but just <laughs> just if you ever want to progress, and I'm sure she could probably tell you the do's and don'ts. I imagine there's stuff that uh, her really annoys her, so you can get a little heads up on how to keep a sweet there. Look. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, no, fantastic. Let's sort of rewind, uh, sort of you know, back to sort of uh, your sort of earliest memories of sort of uh, you know how you get into how you got into obviously the aviation and things like that. Do you remember the first time uh, that you sort of set foot onto a plane? Um, I mean, my mum's always taken me on planes from such a young age. Um, the first time must have been when I was like um, a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she told you where that was was too. Um, I think it was Cairo. I can't remember if that was the first place, but I know we definitely went to Cairo. Mm. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Is there a has there been like a, a standout trip where you where you really thought like not just the flight experience, but sort of obviously where you ended up? Is there something that really sticks out in your mind as somewhere you'd love to go back to one day? Um, I like Dubai. Um, I also like um Spain. Um, Barcelona. Oh yeah, Barcelona's lovely. Have you ever been there, Tom? Where's that? Barcelona. No, it's on my list of places to go to. Actually, I, I wouldn't mind going to uh, to Barcelona. It's a it's a lovely, lovely city. Yeah, no, fantastic. And it doesn't matter what Saturday you arrive, either Barcelona or Espanol are going to be at home, so you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> For oh, yeah. football fans among you. <laughs> yeah. So when 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 you go to the airport, who's more? Ex excited about the flight then your mum or yourself like who's uh who's sort of jumping to go on a, on an airplane mum gets really, no, I, thought really so. I thought 
Especially if we're at like Heathrow. She's like, oh my God, there's a 380. And she goes over and takes pictures. <laughs> yeah. Just up against the window, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just a little uh, condensation patch where she's been breathing against <laughs> yeah. the window there. Yeah. Just where the breath is, just yeah. you know, just an outline of yeah. I think yeah. I think we're all like that though, secretly. I think we're all like yeah, that. No, but, yeah, no, uh, absolutely. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, Transatlantic Allison, with a little bit of advice which she technically didn't give you, uh, is uh, eye drops in tea and coffee for the pilots that upset you, but she didn't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> So just a little tip if you do you know when you become the you know cabin crew for whichever airline, if someone upsets you, a little bit of eye drop goes a long yeah. way. But uh but yeah, just, that just don't cool. do both pilots because someone's gonna have to put you down someone's on the ground have at to some fly. point. Yeah, don't yeah, don't yeah, for <laughs> that, don't do both of them. Yeah. <laughs> um zero one task zero one says we have a pilot and soon we will have an uh, air crew. All the departure lounge needs is a plane. We are laughing. Well, Never say never. That's the dream. Get our own little private jet. Be nice. Uh, at some point. Um, but yeah, well, aren't, um, we going to, um, <laughs> aren't we going to San Tropez or wherever it was? Who was paying for that? Do you remember all that discussion the other week? Ken, yeah, Ken was taking us to uh, St. Martin. At least he That's did. That's it, St. Martin. What we told him was happening, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, Lovely. I'm uh, still Rock looking forward to that now. Rob Brown plays the and says, can't beat some window licking at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, up with COVID, so I wouldn't recommend it. No, no. If yeah, if ever there's an advert for not to do it, Steve's it. Yeah. <laughs> that one brain cell is going to get Awful. pretty lonely. Yeah, if the other one goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me. Uh, we've got some pictures that you have requested uh, for us to show. Um, so we'll, we'll sort of bring one uh, on to the screen now. I'm hoping this doesn't cover the whole screen. If it does, I, then that's my fault. It doesn't. It just does that. It covers Caitlin, though. Uh, but uh, talk to us about this. You were helping out on EasyJet, I believe. Um, what's the story behind this? Um, so we were going to Barcelona, funnily enough, which I was talking about earlier. Um, yeah. And I, I, me and my mum spoke to the cabin crew, and we said that I've always wanted to be cabin crew. And they said, um, oh, you can help us out if you want. Um, so um, I helped collect the rubbish and I actually spoke on the tannoy. Oh, wow. Oh, did you address the aircraft? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Can you remember? Your um, I did announcements. I think it was the duty free announcement. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, lovely. That's a uh, good of easy jet. Get the uh, youngest member to start sort of promoting alcohol. That's a, that's a good look from. Well done, easy jet. I'd have, I'd have, if that was me, I'd have taken full advantage of that and scared the passengers and gone, "Hello, it's the pilot here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just looking around in their seats, going, "What?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, does anybody know what this button does? <laughs> <laughs> Only I've pressed it by accident. Now the door's open. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Like, yeah. yeah. So obviously doing that, then, but it, it kind of uh, captures your imagination to want to obviously carry on, carry on with. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah. Um, it's really good that you've kind of got the, the bug to do it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely. Um Another picture I'll show, um, and we'll, we'll sort of talk about this because I think this sort of goes into what we were talking about. I think it was last week when we did the uh, the review for um, React 2022. The picture here uh, with you uh, next to uh, sort of the Red Arrows sort of sign and, and tent and that. I'm going to make a guess here and say they're one of your favourite display teams. Yeah, they are. <laughs> What was your memory of sort of this? Uh, and did you get to meet any of the pilots at this point? Um, yeah, um, I'm, I am I did meet the Red Arrows and I was so excited because I was like, oh my God, the Red Arrows. <laughs> yeah. Do you get many displays near where you live or do you have to travel a little um, way? I mean, there's um, so the occasional plane that goes over um over because we live near rf holton um yeah. we I, I was driving through holton yesterday with my grandparents and funnily enough um we saw a lancaster fly over oh, wow 
that actually came down to um, to Bournemouth yesterday as well. So we both both got to see it. So yeah, yeah. Do you remember the last time you saw the Reds, like out when you've been out and about? Um, I can't remember the last time I saw the Reds. I think I saw them. I don't know if on TV counts when they did um, the Queen's Jubilee. Oh uh, yeah, that whole fly pass was absolutely astonishing. That was obviously for aviation geeks. That was the best of the whole of the whole thing. To be honest, most of them went, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what you mean right. for the Queen? No, I'm here for the aviation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, the Reds are phenomenal. Like I, I was lucky enough and to see them at React the other week, and they were they were still fantastic. Yeah, they were mm. absolutely amazing display. And like what they can do is ridiculous. I'd, I'd like to make just a, a quick apology uh, to uh, to Alison. He says, uh, "Don't joke. We have one that sounds like that on the tannoy." <laughs> <laughs> So, Your yeah, next uh, flight out, apologies. Alison. You need to do it. Yeah, apologies. I, I didn't realise I was accurate. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, uh, fantastic. So, just very quickly, if anyone has any questions uh, for Caitlin, uh, do get them into the chat, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get them asked. Um, and uh, yeah, it uh, should be a lot of fun. We're doing this uh, ooh, for about another. 10, 15 minutes or so, uh, and then we're going to get into the, the fun side of it. Uh, not to say this ain't fun, but we're going to get into the fun side and bring back Rate My Deliveries, all handpicked by Caitlin. Um, Steve has no idea uh, oh, yeah. what, uh, what's been picked. So Very, uh, uh, sorry, very quickly, Tom. Thank you very, very that's much, it. Clive. That's yeah, thank you, Clive. Good. Much appreciated, as always, um, for, the, for the super chat. So... <clears throat> Uh, I'll get on to another picture that we've got here. Um, here we go. Talk us through this. Obviously, I imagine this was kind of like the inspiration for you uh, to kind of go with sort of the you know the Emirates or the the Gulf Airs of the world. Yeah, that's definitely the favourite picture, the Emirates picture. <laughs> yeah. uh, how did this uh, How did this come about? Was this just on a on a sort of a, a flight across, or was this like an opportunity, a bit like the EasyJet one? Um, it was a bit like the EasyJet one. We mentioned it to them, and I, I can't remember her name. I think her name was Josephine, and she said, um, um, would you like to put the uniform on and um, give your mum, um, like, snacks and a drink? So <laughs> I, I, she she told me what she wanted, and I got to bring her her drink and snacks um, with the cabin crew uniform on. Oh, wow. Was it chicken or beef? Yeah. <laughs> Neither. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tie that in with a question that Alison's yeah. got, seeing as you've uh, got the aspirations of cabin crew. Uh, so, Caitlin, question. Chicken or beef? Chicken. Chicken. Very good. <laughs> very good. Uh, I'd have to go chicken as well. I'm a sucker for chicken. I think on a flight I would go for chicken because it's just slightly lighter than beef yes. as an uh, in-flight meal. Depends if you're going over Windsor on the Bangladesh airline sort of thing as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true enough. <laughs> yeah, you don't need stick that. With me, stick with me forever. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny story. Win chicken dinner. Yeah, <laughs> stick with me forever, that story. That's one of the funniest things I've ever... I still get visions now of when like, planes go over or something, or if I'm back <laughs> up at night, back up at Heathrow or something, and I just see all these planes going over, and I think, that poor bloke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The whole now, world came down with him. Up and just gets dumped on, literally. Mm, oh, yeah. So funny, so funny. Uh, right, uh, let's get, uh, get through some other questions here. Um, zero one Tasker zero one says, "Have you ever thought of the RAF, Caitlin, or always wanted to be uh, sort of in the commercial side of it?" Um, I've always wanted to be in the commercial side of it. Definitely, I have thought about the RAF a few times. Um, because of the red arrows. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, in terms of display teams and stuff, have you seen any other display teams at all? Or, or do you sort of just really go for like just the reds themselves? Um, I think it's just the reds that I've seen. I can't. I think I have seen other display teams at Riot, but yeah. I can't remember yeah. which ones. Ah, okay. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have to pause because a legend has just turned up into thing. Batman has turned up. 
Uh. <laughs> Batman is here. Uh, I'm Batman. Uh, he says, hello, uh, I'm, I know Caitlin in real life, and now she's on a live stream and becoming on mod, so just popping in to say hello. Very nice. Well, thank, you for keep, yeah, thank you for keeping the world safe, mate. Appreciate yeah. it. hope you and Robin are doing well. Yeah, yeah. not seen Robin in a while. No. But no, thank you, uh, thank you for, for popping in and, and dropping that to us. A uh, question from the name I will not read out because I'll butcher it like anything. Uh, have you ever been to Asia? Um, I don't know what countries are part of Asia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, let's start reading. Them. Have, you, have you been to China? No. Japan? No. Then no. Uh, <laughs> it's the only ones I can think of. That's no, the only ones I can think of. There's more. Isn't what's Dubai? Dangerous, isn't it? Middle East, Middle East thing, Asian, yeah, 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 something like that. I mean, geography is my strong point, but the fact is, my brain is fried at the moment, so I, I can't <laughs> really think if uh, if that counts. But we'll go for it. Uh, we'll, we'll go with no for now. Um, oh, there you go. There's the correction there. Uh, Gail saying no, she's not been to Asia. So there you go. There we go. <laughs> That's told us. Wonderful. Right, another uh, sort of last-ish picture I think we've got for now. I'm trying to, yep, just this one here. Here you go. This was also on the EasyJet plane, I imagine, when the, off to, was it Barcelona? Yeah. And how much, uh, sort of how much fun was it to kind of uh, sort of be pushing around the the, uh, the trolley there? I found it really fun. As you can see, I'm smiling and <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, did you have the opportunity to kind of offer it offer it out to people? Then did people know that you were sort of just sort of there to kind of have the experience, or was it a case of that's just like a photo opportunity? Um, I think I did offer, but it was mainly the um, cabin crew lady that um, was doing most of the talking. Ah, okay, so you just got to push the trolley. Mainly, yeah. That's like me at the supermarket when I was younger. I only got to push the trolley. Yeah. Never got to say anything. <laughs> But uh, I'm, I'm impressed with how easily you exploit free child labour. Like, give them their due. They've, uh, they've probably <laughs> emptied the bins, pulled a trolley round. They had a right old good time. The air, the air, uh, kind of steward getting you to do everything. Don't you know that's how they work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's why the, why the fees are so low. We get children to do the jobs for them now. You know, at the check-in desk when they go, you uh, got any children to bring with you? No? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, children? None. Did you push the trolley yourself? Like, it, it looks like it would be quite sort of heavy to be pushing around the place. Um, I had the um, cabin crew helping me out. Yeah. Like, pretty sturdy and that, that's for sure. That's because it's on chains. So, yeah, look. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little little child with his feet out the bottom of it pushing it along just to uh go along with the child labor going on with easy jet there we've blown their world apart here yeah <laughs> child labor chains and no one's looked into this yet yeah that's it outrageous oh dear we love you easy jet we're only kidding um i'll pop that out there um right okay so uh, well, there's another little bit which we'll talk about sort of towards the end of the show, which I know there's, you know, that you've been, I've been requested to bring up, but we'll do that towards the end. Um, <laughs> I've had a, <laughs> I've had a message uh, to say, can you pull the blind down? <laughs> <laughs> it's all going off now. There you go. Yes. It says I'll get Caitlin to pull the blind down. She's only in the other room. I'll go and pull the blind down. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Do you get any last minute questions uh, into into the uh, into the chat for uh, for Caitlin to ask uh, answer rather uh, before uh, we jump on oh. to? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're we right. can still see you. We is fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, get last minute questions in by, before we go on to the rating of deliveries that she's picked for us. Uh, now, in terms of, of course, your aspirations of wanting to do cabin crew and things like that, 
Um, would you say that you're a bit like a, are you a bit of a plane spotter yourself? Do you go out to sort of airports and do like some spotting or is it literally just whatever flies over? Um, I do some plane spotting with my mum. It's her fault. She got me into it. <laughs> All your fault. <laughs> yeah. Well, Have you ever seen any like anything properly rubbery that sort of stuck in your head when you when you've been? Um, I was in the airport uh, terminal with my mum, but we did see the um, Emirates, um, the blue one. Oh the wow! Smarties one, I call it the Smarties plane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a nice one. I still, I'm still yet to see that. Yeah, I've never seen it. Ian went to see it, didn't he? When it went to Manchester. I've seen it with I've seen it in my with with my eyes, but never actually with like you know going there with a camera and then actually being lucky enough to to actually see it. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that I get to kind of have the opportunity to see that at some point, which would be quite nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I think <laughs> Clive Everly says blame Gail for it, Caitlin. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> So everyone's got a story where they blame someone for getting them into aviation. I blame my dad for it. <laughs> he worked at British Airways and then brought me on the model. And then since then, I was hooked. I don't know exactly where mine came from. I know we used to go to air shows when we were a little bit younger. So it's obviously was ingrained early doors. Uh, yeah, my 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 uh, my dad worked at British Airways for a while, and I've got family that worked for like Pan Am and United. Um, and yeah, it's just aviation is like. Yeah. In my sort of in my blood, and then, like literally, I still remember it. Still got it. First plane that I got bought was a Worcester. For anyone that remembers the old Worcester snap together planes, um, Virgin Atlantic seven four seven. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, since then I've, I've yeah kept it and then yeah carried on. So, what about yourself? Do you and your mum have like collect um, aircraft models or or not so much? Yeah, mom collects models, especially the Emirates 380s. Oh, yeah. There's a few of those lined up in the front room or whatever, I'm sure. <laughs> She's obsessed yes. with them. She loves them. Oh, I remember she was like constantly messaging me going, I've got this, I've got this. And I'm like, I don't even have that. <laughs> I've got quite a few of them. Steve's readjusting. <laughs> I'll take him off screen while he does that. I think he's back. Yeah, sorry. You good? I was just turning my... Just was just making a little bit of a racket, so sorry about that. That's all right. That's all right, no problem. Uh, Farang Travels, uh, who has just popped in, uh, says, hello, guys, so evening, uh, evening to you. Uh, right, okay, question uh, for you. Um, Caitlin, so A320, A330 or A350 of the current ones, which is the best? Um, A350s. Good answer. Yeah, <clears throat> although because it's Alison, wrong answer. The correct answer was 330 for her. But... Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you ever yeah. have a cup of tea one day, Caitlin, and you're wondering why it tastes like eye drops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just say three thirty, just to keep the audience happy, if you wouldn't mind. Three <laughs> thirty. Yeah, well done. <clears throat> well done. Yeah, yeah. Good answer. Well done. <laughs> the Manchester ones in Virgin livery, absolutely on point. They're the best. Yeah, I don't think there's an A three thirty out there that beats it. No. No, I do. I don't know. Looking forward to seeing their three thirty neos. Supposed to be coming in the next uh, next sort of few. Months, I think, as well. They released their um, new new first class, I think it is, or their new premium product, and it just looks like, you know, spot on sort of thing. So very much looking forward to seeing their uh, their three thirty neos. Um. So I suppose if there's a if there's a particular plane that you haven't been on, Caitlin, but you want to go on uh, one day, uh, what would it be? Um, definitely Golf Air. Golf Air. Yeah. yeah, golf. Yeah, very nice, very nice airline. From what I've seen from people that have reviewed it on the internet, um, I know I'm pretty sure the likes of uh, Paul Lucas and next week's guest um, have have sort of um, reviewed it and always said positive things about it. So 
yeah, very you know, it's a good airline to pick, and always nice to see when you're out plane spotting. Yeah, you don't see them, but often in Heathrow either, do you? It's always a little bit of a treat. You're not always guaranteed a, a golf air at Heathrow when you go there. Uh, well, you are daily, twice, I think. One in the morning, early on, uh, um, that parts around uh, like mid-morning. And then the other one will come in between sort of half two and half three in the afternoon, depending on how quick it gets to you. And then you never know whether you're going to catch it at Myrtle Avenue or see it in the far distance. Uh, yeah, as it goes, yeah, northern runway. Yeah, the problem with that. Yeah, sure. yeah. So it's always a guessing yeah, that, game. But, it's like you've got to try and work out which one you're going to get. <laughs> yeah, that mate of mine, Sam, actually, he's off to um, Australia shortly. He's booked with Golf Air, and then he switches over to Singapore. So I'll have to, uh, mm. I have to get a little review out of him when he goes. Yeah, be a good, be a good shot. Um, Alison's let you off. <clears throat> she said no, three fifty is lush, and that she'll be on it soon. Oh wow! Um, and of course, in, in, we were just obviously mentioning the three thirty neos for Virgin uh, next month. Apparently, September they're due. Uh, they're due in to, uh, to into Virgin, so that'd be quite. You know, it's not too far away now. I'm not actually seen any of the, uh, the the frames that have been built because I know normally I follow somebody who like. Uh, takes a lot of photos at Toulouse and stuff and Hamburg as well, a lot of Hamburg spotters as well. And I've not seen one frame yet that's uh, sort of been pictured that's actually for them. So whether they're sort of tucked away, though, no one can see them. Yeah, no, um, likewise, I haven't seen them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, interestingly, Rob Brown, uh, playing spotting, says, Golf Air was the best TriStar livery ever. It's a good shout. Oh, it's probably well, one of the best VC10 liveries apart from Boac as well. We've had a, a couple of people confirm that the uh, first route is uh, is Boston as well for the, the 330 Neo, so that would be interesting to No see better confirmation than from Alison herself. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, good uh, good shout on that one. Uh, Jack Rolls, hide your, uh, hide your APUs. Uh, he's in the house. Uh, oh, arriving what time do you call this? To you. Yeah. He's been now. He's been off on the jolly. Where have you been for forty minutes? Uh, Disgusting. Well, evening sausage. <laughs> do you know what? Uh, this is this is why we love having Alison watch us. She sent me a photo of the the, the one of the A three thirty Neo frames that's been off to to paint. So we'll see one shortly in uh, in full color. Oh wow! No doubt. I won't show it, but she sent me one, so I know it's there. In fact, I will probably just I'll do that instead. <laughs> says, "There you go. It's one of the three thirty neos being taken, smart, though, taken off to uh, off the paint. So I'm, yeah, very much looking forward to seeing that in the in virgin colours. That'd be really really nice. Yeah, really good. So thank you for that. Uh, I've just seen a new name there. Uh, HBB Photography says hi. So uh, hello. Um, very, yeah, very thanks for joining us." Yeah, um, I can't really turn any brightness up for Caitlin. You might have to put a light on. Yeah, I'll put a light on. <laughs> Sound like your mum now. I'm just put in that the light dark. On. Put the yeah, put it all down. Poor girl, pull the blind. Yeah, put the light on. Getting a right old runner. Yeah, trying to do a live show here. God. <laughs> Rate the air. What are you on there, Tom? Anyway. Uh, just coke. Don't don't get too excited. Ah, uh, yes. A, yeah, an interesting day coming up tomorrow. Likewise, but, this uh, is also coke. It's not. <laughs> it really isn't. Um, all right. So I think what we'll do, uh, we'll leave it there. Like I said, at the end of the show, we'll bring up very you know something that's uh, towards sort of you know it's a nice little awareness, which I think we'll talk about. But we'll get into the. Uh, the fun side here now, uh, where we have a little bit of a, a light-hearted joke. Uh, we are now going into uh, Rates My Liveries. This is the part, or what would be the, the mini-series, where we have guests or we pick a, pick a particular subject and we uh, choose liveries and we rate them out of 10 and give our overall uh, you know, average, as well as, of course, getting the audience involved as well and the... Uh, Huge amount of people that are watching at the moment can get involved as well. All you got to do, let us know what you think of the livery. 
and uh, then just rate it out of 10 and we'll get your comment shown on screen. Now we'll do this differently as opposed to what we did with the photos. We won't overlay it. We'll uh, just share the screen here. So first up on the rating uh, that we're doing, Steve has no idea of the liveries that are coming up. So I was just smoking at the terrible joke in the uh, in the comments just now <laughs> from the uh, from the chap called Alistair. Yeah, I see. On. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Let's read it out. He says, "I threw my phone from the roof and it broke. I guess airplane mode wasn't working." <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the I don't have the things anymore when they go very nice. Oh no! Well. Yeah, it would have been perfect for that, but uh, yeah, unfortunately not. Uh, right, okay, let's get into the show, uh, into this part of the show. Uh, Ian is here. Ian's right. just popped in. So there he is. What time do you call this? <laughs> I hope you're back <laughs> better soon. I, I, I hear he today, so I hope he's uh, hope he's on the mend pretty quickly. Yes, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um Alison again giving us some more info just on the 330 news. Uh, Golf Victor uh, Juliet Alpha Zulu first revenue flight is scheduled for October 12th. So really not far away yeah. at all. So uh, yeah. yeah, that'd be good. Really good. Ian is, <laughs> Ian is currently <laughs> he's in Domino's right now. <laughs> Tell us what you're ordering, and we'll show it on the screen. Yeah, we, we can do a rate rate my pizza as well. Rate my pizza, yeah. I think yeah. there's uh, what you call it. Is it something called like rate my takeaway or something? I don't think anyone's got that yet, have they? <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I don't That's think a... anyone's claimed that yet. We could probably do something like that. Second best thing on YouTube, rate my takeaway. Oh. <laughs> is that is that after this, this this show here? Yeah, clearly. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It really isn't. Right. <clears throat> Let's go into the ratings before we all get a little bit out of hand. So uh, the first delivery that um, Caitlin has picked surprised me a little bit, but it's a rather interesting one. So she's gone for um, ATA or I think there is it American American Trans Airways or something like that. Um, one of the sort of older airlines from back from late 90s to sort of mid 2000s uh, operated the likes of the 727, 757 and TriStars. And um, of course, quite an interesting picture because both 727 and 757 are uh, in this particular livery. 25 year anniversary um, livery. Why did you pick this one? Um, I just think it's a really interesting aircraft and the design on it is really cool But because um, it's the 25th anniversary. But um, it's also, um, it just looks really appealing and it looks different to... <laughs> I'm just reading, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading the chat, sorry. <laughs> it's just, everyone's talking about the pizza now because Ian's in, in the... In <laughs> And Clive, oh, Clive's made the cardinal sin. Cardinal sin. Pineapple on it, please. Absolutely not. No. <laughs> so Ian then put, uh, no pineapple, Clive. Can you block that comment, please, Gail? <laughs> <laughs> and rightly so. <laughs> and just one last joke before we carry on. Uh, what do you call an airplane that flies backwards? A receding airline. Uh, not good. as good as your first one, mate, but... Thank you, anyway. It's quite good. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, an interesting livery, obviously, to celebrate their 25th anniversary. Um, Steve, what do you make of this one? I quite like the fact that uh, kind of captures a celebration well, doesn't it? Like the streamers and and all that. It, it certainly it certainly celebrates what they've done, and it and it shows you in the livery that they're, they're kind of uh, excited and celebrating. It's nice vibrant colour and I, I kind of like the uh, oh so yeah I'm I'm not too displeased with this one on as all things go. Mm, I do like it. I, I quite like the um, any of the, the ATA liveries. If you've ever seen the sort of the older liveries to the, the, the sort of the last ones that they used um before sort of uh I think they went bankrupt I think. Um if you've if you've seen any of the liveries they're all very good. They're all very good liveries and there's not 
there's not one that that, that fails to to look up to you know being really really nice. So to put this on, you know, like I say, it captures celebration. It tells you exactly what it is. It's not massive. It's not too in your face. It's it does enough to kind of go right. We're celebrating this, and that's this is what we're doing. So I think it's um, yeah, I think it's 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 pretty much spot on. You guys have thirty seconds to have a quick think about what rating you'll give it out of ten as I go into the chat to see what people think and i've got to try and get past uh the uh, pizza comments um although very interestingly uh where was it i did see it just then uh the max jet tv live expressed by max woodman whose name always gets longer every week that's how i shall call him from now on says maybe tom we should do rate my food <laughs> i don't know if we'll get done for that but but uh yeah um Zero one Tasker zero one says it's definitely a ten pointer. Um, Jim Gemmel says, "How long did it take for y'all to notice the seven two seven in the background?" Well, because it's only I had the picture, it didn't take me very long at all. But did you notice the seven two seven in the background before I said it? Uh, I was I was impressed that they're both in uniform livery rather than a one off. Yeah, fair play, fair play, and then lots of. Uh, Lots of ratings uh, coming in as well. So we'll get onto the ratings side of it now. So, uh, Caitlin, as you chose this one, you get the honours of doing it out of 10 first. What do you give it? Um, nine out of 10. Solid nine. At least you didn't do what Jack Rolls did and give it a two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, all right, nine out of 10. Steve? Um. I will give it an eight because I can't set the bar too high because I don't know what's what's coming up next. So I will give it a nice solid eight. Yeah, I think eight sounds good. I know what's coming up next, but I will say, well, I, yeah, eight out of ten sounds about right. So uh, I think it's fair to say eight out of ten for that one. I think is about fair. Let's have a look and see what everyone has put. Uh, Gail has put uh, 8 out of 10, so she agrees with us. Uh, Lynn Keeble, 9 out of 10. Uh, Clive Everly, 5 out of 10. Uh, Jim has put 7. Uh, zero 01 Tasker zero 01 with a 6. Martin Waldridge, evening to you, uh, says 6 out of 10. Uh, Transatlantic Allison says, I want to hate it because it's too busy, but I like it, 7 out of 10. Uh, Ian to put 8 out of 10, so he's still, he's still waiting for his order to come through. Um, <laughs> uh, David Bone goes for 11 out of 10. There you go. And uh, as always, the MaxJet TV Live Express by Max Woodman, whose name gets longer every week, gives it 1,010. <laughs> you've had a good start there. Nobody slated it, so you've done all right on your first Done all pick. right, yeah. Very, yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> Alison's put, yeah, isn't that what we're rating in terms of the pizza? We're not rating any pizzas. <laughs> no pizzas. Uh, <laughs> right, or let's go on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, I had I had uh, I had pizza last night. Uh, let's, let's not Ooh. talk about that. Uh, let's go. So next one is an interesting one, and I believe this is like an old flight sim picture because I recognise this type of picture from. Uh, Oh, the seven two seven. Sorry, not the pizza. The seven two seven. She was on the map. Not the uh, not the pizza. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> she thought we were rating the seven two seven and seven five seven. Fair enough. Uh, all right. Uh, very quickly, saying hello to uh, Samuel Bandari, who says good evening, Tom, Ian, and Caitlin. So good evening to you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and of course, our second livery that we've got here is, of course, the WestJet Walt Disney World uh, livery. Uh, which is obviously a very busy and very colourful plane indeed. Caitlin, why did you pick this? I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Disney. <laughs> um, well, why else would you pick it? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, carry on. Um, it's definitely um, very magical looking. <laughs> very magical. I like the colours. Personally, it's like a midnight blue sort of thing. Yeah, very, very nice indeed. It's not too bad. A lot of airlines in America, of course, um, have uh, you know done their own sort of version of, of this sort of thing. 
with the, the Walt Disney side of it. I think Alaska were one of them to do it as well. Uh, Steve, uh, yay or nay on this one? I quite like the uh, the presentation of, of where Mickey Mouse is. I think that's the... Uh... I think that's really nicely done. It works. It works very well where they where they put him in it. Feels the uh, tail up quite nice. That's a bonus. Yeah, color scheme's really good. And we've we've said it on previous liveries. A young young child or whatever who's a little bit unsure about flying or whatever, and you go to an aircraft and it looks look vibrant. Has a as a, a well known character be enough just to uh, just to set. Like the nervous child down, and I'm always, I'm always quite a, a fan of these for sort of helping uh, youngsters across and that. But it's a, it's a nice livery on its own as a standalone livery. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty well done. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's lovely, and like you say, it's, uh, it's enough to kind of get the sort of young children quite excited, especially if they're, uh, you know, into Disney um, for, for sort of flying on a, on an airplane if they've maybe sort of been a little bit worried about it sort of thing and they can go and see oh they've got mickey mouse on the plane and yeah it's yeah really really nice i like it uh somil bandari with a very quick popping in uh but he's off now so thanks for the quick pop in you know always appreciate it and uh, yeah thank you so much <clears throat> right uh caitlin and steve you have we're going to do 20 seconds for you guys to think of um yeah, 20 seconds for you guys to think of uh, your rating as I go through the uh, comments and see what people think of it. Um, let's have a look here. Yeah, lots of people saying that they like it. Uh, David Bone uh, says it looks like a poster you'd see at the cinema. Pretty much like, you know, uh, all like one of them adverts where, you know, you've got, you've got like um, an airline and a... Uh, you know, let's say a business that have, have partnered up and stuff, and you know, you you see that air to air shot sort of thing. That's that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Um, Rob Brown plane spotting says it's a cool YouTube video of WestJet painting uh, pro painting process. Even kids found it magical. So there you go. There's that you know inspiration for um, you know getting young children quite excited for flying. Yeah, I see it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see it. Uh, Allison says, "Oh no, it's got the mouse on it." Done far too many Orlando flights full of sugar-filled Disney crazies to score this one high. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other end of the spectrum Amazing. for you. There's lots of people go, "Oh, you know, it's all great for the kid," and then <laughs> the other end is uh, the, they're all sugar-filled anyway. Um, let's have a look here, and of course, yeah, Martin Waldridge with flights to Pluto. Yeah, well, I gave it a smirk and I feel ashamed of myself. Oh, dear. Uh, Michael Painter says, good evening, everyone. Uh, all uh, Sorry, good evening. All apologies for being late. We just got back from a barbecue. We'll just talk about food. Ian's got pizza. Michael's been to uh, to, to barbecue. Uh, the MaxJet TV Live, expressed by MaxJet TV Live, whose name is now getting even longer um, every week, it says uh, giving it a... Uh, Giving it an A10 Thunderbolt of 10 uh, of the Flying Milky Way chocolate bar. Everyone's just talking about chocolate and food and stuff. What is it with today? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. Everyone's talking about food. And I've noticed that Rob Brown asked about chutney as well. So it is literally a, th a food themed show tonight. Yeah. Honestly. Right, let's go into the ratings. Uh, Caitlin, over to you out of 10. What do you give it? Uh, 10 out of 10. Bang on 10 out of Ooh. 10. That's how much she likes it. Steve, over to you. Um, on the basis that I like it more than the first one, I'm going to creep up to a nine. To a nine. I think I'd go along the same lines. I think I quite like it. So I think we're going to safely say a nine out of ten, which I think is very, very good indeed. Let's have a look and see what everyone else has put. I'm not going to show these on the screen. Uh, Clive Everly gives it an eight out of ten. Lynn Keeble gives it a ten. Uh, zero one, Tasker zero one says it's disney uh it's disney look too good uh but six out of ten for trying <laughs> so quite a low score oh. six out of ten uh rob brown plain spotting i'm not even going to read out all them numbers but i'm going to imagine it's you're going to round that down to eight out of ten uh, yeah <laughs> uh jim gimmel says it's a magical 10 out of 10 
Um, I did see some more numbers there. David Bone, 8 out of 10. Martin Wardridge with a 3. Oh, terrible jokes and low scores. What what has he become? Who knows? Crazy. Michael Painter, 8 out of 10. And uh, uh, CJJB05, a, a name that I've not seen. So, hello to you. Uh, solid 6 out of 10. Uh, a lot going on on it. So, yeah, it depends on whether you uh, are a big fan of it or not. But, yeah. Good, uh, good stuff indeed. Right, I'll just uh, yeah. There we go. All right, let's move on to the next one. I believe we may have spoken about this one before in a previous show. However, Caitlin has picked it, um, so uh, we are going to uh, discuss it and uh, see why we like it. Caitlin, you've played this one. This is quite a nice one. I, I thoroughly enjoy this livery. Why do you like it? Um, I mean, it's um, the Queen of the Skies. Hmm? And I like the design on it. Um, I think it's a unique design that Qantas have gone for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all to do with the Aborigine art sort of thing uh, I think a lot when we did the World Tales show we did uh, we, we did a talk on um, this particular livery uh, and of course British Airways copied this livery uh, and put it onto their uh, their Tales as a World livery to represent Australia but I think little did I know and a lot of other people knew that this livery came first and I thought the World Tale one came first but no it was the other way around so this livery came first um, before the uh, the British Airways one, so I didn't know that. So uh, a very nice sort of livery. It's on two. It was on two different seven four sevens with two different engine types. We're going to get very technical about it. Um, except this one, uh, the one this one doesn't have its engines painted, whereas the uh, Rolls Royce powered seven four seven had the red engines as well. Steve, over to you. What do you make of this one? Yeah, this particular photo, I would have preferred it with the uh, red engine covers, to be honest, but. For, for the job it does, it it kind of picks up um, Australia very nicely, like the the, uh, the things you associate of uh, the air, there's rock, kind of sandy red. Yeah, it, it captures Australia very very nicely in it. Mm. My, my I guess my criticism is it might be a little bit too uh, too busy for my liking, but you will find out my rating in due course i quite like it because i've actually got a model of this you know one 200 scale and uh yeah it just it gives you a little bit more detail from what you actually see on the pictures um so yeah it's 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 from an era where colorful liveries were a big thing back then whereas now obviously not so much so um yeah, really, really nice and, and a very good job from Qantas as well. Kind of wish they'd bring it back, but God knows what you put it on, especially with their fleet nowadays. And, and if they yeah. did, they'd put it on a 330, which we wouldn't see. And you probably could do it on a 787 because obviously all well, the paint and that. So Yeah, it wouldn't work on the, the 380 either, I don't think. No, so probably, yeah, probably never see it again. But uh, right, uh, 30 seconds for you guys to think of. Um, yeah, think of the the ratings, and I'll go through the chat and see what people think of uh, this one. Um, Rob Brown playing sporting says, "Not for me," as we say in Scotland, gads. Uh, Jack Rolls says, uh, "Love this livery. Would have loved to have seen this." Uh, Martin Waldridge, obviously trying to be funny and actually getting a giggle out of me, says, "I like the Velociraptor on the tail." <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Martin's yeah. been on the Toyser today, clearly. Yes, yeah, certainly as on the old Sherbets. Um, David yeah. Bone says it looks a bit like Braniff back in the day. You can sort of see, yeah, the colours and stuff. You can sort of see that. Um, Lynn Keeble loves 747 but doesn't like this livery. Yeah, um, I, I kind of I go along with that a little bit, I'll be quite honest. Yes. All right, let's go into the ratings then uh, as we uh, yeah go for that. Uh Kaylin, your rating for this one? Um, I'm going to give it a 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. See, this is somebody who actually gets picking their own liveries and give them a high score. Jack Rolls. <laughs> yeah. 
picking liveries and going, well, I'll give it a two. <laughs> oh, I don't like it. It's a five. Uh, <laughs> all right, eight out of ten. Steve? Um, seven for me. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm inclined to give it probably eight as well. I think I'll agree with Caitlin. Um, eight out of ten on that one. So, with Steve's score of seven, that takes it to 7.5 out of ten, which I still think is reasonable. Um, let's have a look at some of the ratings that people have given it. Clive's given it 7 out of 10. Uh, Lynn Keeble, 6. Alison, 7.5 out of 10, so she agrees with us. Uh, as this livery is mint, I'm going to give it pi 3.14. There's a joke in there somewhere, I'm sure of it, Rob. Good try. <laughs> uh, Jack Rolls gives it the 7th of February. It shows the character of what Australia is about. December of February. <laughs> yeah, he's giving it the seventh for the second look. So February. Yeah, yeah he's cool. American. Uh Michael Painter, eight out of ten. Jim Gemmell, five out of ten. Martin Woodridge, five out of ten. Um David Bone, nine out of ten. Uh Maxjet TV Live Express by Maxjet TV Live, whose name gets longer every week. Uh gives it uh, two thousand and ten. <laughs> um and yeah that's uh yeah that's pretty much that one so good yeah good choice on that one right next one quite an interesting one and i can sort of see why it's been picked it's very simple but very yeah very nice indeed let me just bring that back there so everyone can see it there we go uh, it is of course saudi arabians uh 787-9 i don't quite know what the delivery is for and we don't have ian statman he's probably stuffing his face full of pizza and uh, pizza rolls so uh caitlin uh tell us why you chose this one um the design on it um it's nice and it's it's simple but i just really like um the end bit of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah simple enough um it's a lot better than some of the other ones that they've got where they've got the full livery on the fuselage but then it's like a gold tail which i don't think works i don't don't think it works at all um it's not very nice um there you go yeah ian is yeah ian just put 100 percent correct he is currently stuffing his face um <laughs> allison there you go <clears throat> i knew that's you know she's always full of uh Always full of knowledge, which is New York subway art. So there's your uh, there's your reason as to why that is the way it is. But Steve, over to you. Oh, hang on! I've got a mouthful of Guinness. One sec. Um, <laughs> I was turning a light on. Yeah, I I don't mind it. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of nothing going on before the little flash at the back. Maybe if it had gone up slightly, I would have uh, been slightly more kind of infused by it it's not it's not shockingly terrible but for a, for a special i'd like to have seen a little bit more going on sort of towards the front of the aircraft perhaps oh it looks like it it's uh yeah it's not it's not the actual thing it looks like it says allison fair yeah. enough all right um yeah quite like it quite like it it's um it's very different to what we're used to seeing and like I said, it's a lot better than some of the ones that they have already. So, uh, yeah, I, I do quite like it. Um, so, uh, 30 seconds for you guys to have a quick think about your rating uh, for this one. And I'll go through the comments. Clive Everly says that he, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, like this one. He's a big fan of it. Uh, Jim Gemmel, uh, simple but effective, like it. Um That's interesting. Don't know why that's come up. Um, Rob Brown plane spotting going off of a topic that we've spoken about many, many times, where the seven eight sevens don't carry off special liveries that well. Yeah, no, right enough. Um, whether this is true or not, I think uh, Gail Leary's done her research on it. So Saudia is uh, celebrating Arabic culture and language by adorning two of its seven eight seven dash nine. Dreamliners with special calligraphy themed liveries, which makes sense a bit more than New York subway art. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, very uh, yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, and just a lot of it is uh, different ratings and stuff. 
So uh, let's go into the ratings. Uh, Caitlin, out of 10, what would you give this one? Um, I'm going to give it 8.5. 8.5, very specific. Good shout. All right, 8.5. Uh, Steve, over to you. Uh, I'm going to bring that score down, I'm afraid, to a uh, 6. <laughs> okay, a 6. I will give it a 7. It is quite nice, but I think there are nicer ones out there. Which I think means averaging about 7 out of 10, which I think is still quite fair. Uh, in the chat, let's have a look and see what people have put uh, for this one. Uh, Clive Beverly's put 9 out of 10. Uh, Lynn Keeble, 8. Rob Brown, 6. Ian, 6. And that's probably the, the pizza he's had, not the livery. Um, <laughs> Alison going straight down the middle, not so sure. So going 5 out of 10. Uh, Jack Rolls uh, giving it the 13th of May. Uh, what a livery, really like this, and it is, uh, and as it's a Dreamliner, it's ten times better. So he gives it a two. <laughs> uh, Michael Painter, <laughs> Michael Painter, four out of ten. Uh, Jim Gemmel, eight. Uh, CJJB05 goes, this is a nine out of ten. The simplicity um, is so nice. David Bone with a very appropriate, um, someone had to do it, 7.87 out of ten. Yeah, lovely. And uh, Ian's corrected me and gone the pizza is a 10 out of 10. Uh, yeah. What have you gone for, Ian? Stick it in the comments. Yeah, you actually haven't told us yet what you've gone for. It seems everyone's talking about food. You may as well find out what you're having. But no, good. Uh, another good shout on that livery. Next up is... I don't know if I want to do that one. It's quite controversial. <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. We're allowed to do it. It's not a problem. Right, this one is Vim uh, from the country I shall not name in case YouTube decide to uh, give me a, you know, or rip me a new one. Um, you can probably tell where it's from. Um, interesting colours on the 757, of course. It's quite a nice little livery. Caitlin, why did you pick it? Um, when I was um, younger, I um... I've always, I always wanted to fly on a pink plane. I just like pink. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no no better reason for that, especially uh, you know, you see a pink plane. I think everyone will kind of want to go on it. I think if they're a huge, huge fan of pink. Um, but uh, yeah, not not bad at all. Steve, uh, what's your uh, what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, this this might come as a shock of anyone who saw my old car, but pink. Pink isn't my go-to colour, but this um, this wear it's uh, it's kind of uh, simplistic and classy at the same time. So it's uh, yeah, it's not it's not ridiculously pink. It's not like baby pink. It it works a lot better than like a, a Barbie pink if you sort of get what I'm edging towards. Yeah, we've had food, chocolate, pizza, Barbie dolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And all sorts. Yeah, it's what this show brings to everybody. Um, yeah, it's not. I, I, it's. I think it's it's a bright color done right because there's not too much of it. Um, and I think yeah. it's yeah. I think it's, it's it's decent. I think it's, it's decent. There are better uh, better liveries out there. I think, but it is uh, it is pretty nice. Um, <laughs> David Bone with. Uh, is it a body form logo, Jen? <laughs> very good. Uh, very good. That's why I love the audience. The audience are all very good. We've all got some nice, witty comments. All right. <clears throat> Over to um, the comments. Uh, you guys have um, about 30 seconds to think of um, your ratings while we go through the comments here. Uh, Clive Everly. Uh, he says he likes 757, but not the colour or the livery. Uh, Jim Gemmel says, always thought Vim was a cleaning product. There you go, yeah. Um, Jack Roll says, I really like the tail colour and the fact it's a rare 757 without the winglets is stunning. This picture was taken about 10 years ago. Um, so that'll probably be why it's not many winglets. Um... One for Ian from uh, Rob Brown Plain Spotting. It says, Sweetheart Strawberry Chutney Pink. 
If you don't know about the Sweetheart Strawberry Chutney, I can't think which episode it is, but there is an episode in there where Ian talks about his love of strawberry, uh, Sweetheart Strawberry Chutney and actually gives you the recipe on how to make it. But then we did a recipe once and then got told off for it. So, <clears throat> told off having too much fun. Uh, right, so... Uh, keep going with some of the comments here. Maxjet TV Live Express by Maxjet TV Live, whose name always gets longer every week, says, uh, like the colours on the 75, but I call it Vimto Airways. <laughs> Probably the wrong kind of colour. Oh, right, yeah. A decent shout. Zero uh, one task zero one says, at least it wasn't called Jif. Uh, or is it Sif now, he says. Um, and Ian Hartley says, the tale is nice. There you go. Wonderful right. insight, Ian. Thank you. Yeah, good, good. well worth the finger typing. Yeah, very good. <laughs> <laughs> One hand on the phone, the other hand with Peter, and yeah, I can just—I can see it now in North Wales. Very good. Um, and then David Bone says, "Now with wings, <laughs> with the body form." No one knows what body form is. Probably worth googling if you fancy it. Yeah. Not going to point out what it is. Um, but yeah, so very good. Uh, right, so ratings. Uh, Caitlin, over to you. Uh, what do you rate this one out of 10? Uh, 7 out of 10. Solid 7. Steve? Uh, yeah, I won't disagree with that. I think seven is a, a fair score. Yeah, I'll probably go for 7 as well, just to round it out, because it makes it nice and easy for everyone involved. 7 out of 10. Uh, let's have a look and see what everyone has put. David Bones put 8 out of 10. Rob Brown has put six. Allison's put six. Uh, Lynn Keeble, seven. Clive Everly with a four. Um, Michael Painter with a seven out of ten. Farring travels with a three. Uh, zero one. Tasker, zero one. Puts four. Jim Gemmell with a three. Uh, Jack Rolls. God, done this. Uh, with the 11th of August. Definitely would have got a picture of this. Well, you wouldn't have done because you probably still in nappies when this was around. <laughs> well, he still is now, Tom. <clears throat> or, or something like that. Uh, Ian says, sorry, my other hand was holding my Chardonnay. Oh, how the other half live. Yeah. Very good. Um, Farring Travels can't believe we, we gave it a seven. I know we're a little bit crazy like that. Um... Alison says, try to see what's under it. I will show you what's under it. It's uh, an Illusion 96. God, they were good planes as well to, to spot when you could. Very nice indeed. All right. On to the next one. And of course, we you know, wouldn't be a, a ratings delivery show with... Uh, with Caitlin and talking about Emirates and Gulf Air, if we didn't include Etihad's purple livery. Um, I think it's fairly obvious why this one was picked, because of the colour. This is more of a Vimto purple colour. Um, but tell us why you picked it. Um, I really like the, the Vimto purple colour. I also like the tail as well. I think um, the design on the tail is quite nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's uh, it's a nice metallic purple as well, which I think also helps its case. Whereas if it was a flat purple, I think it'd be a bit bit bland, even though it's got the colour. Um, Steve, over to you all. I think uh, Ian, just put, you chose this one uh, once, I think, in one of the uh, special livery shows we did. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'd love to think that it's full of caramel and a massive hazelnut. <laughs> <laughs> just a massive quality street. <laughs> yeah. The big yeah. purple one. Well, now, now I think before we, when we last spoke about TA had, had brought their new livery out yet, and that's what that smacks up to me, like the purple version of. And I absolutely love the uh, that new ITA livery, and to me that is very, very similar to to that. But obviously, in purple, that's what it reminds me of. So, yeah. yeah. Still uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the chat and I'm seeing everybody mentioning chocolate bars again. It's one of those nights where everyone's just talking about food. And, and Jim Gemmell's on the same wavelength as me because he just says Cadbury milk tray. Yeah. And I'm just thinking of the adverts. 
I'm going to destroy a chocolate hobnob after this, I'll tell you now. I've got a double decker in the fridge. Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you've got, Caitlin, chocolate wise? Um, no, but. Oh, disappointing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. No, that's fine. Let's uh, let's have a look and see what other people think. Uh, give uh, yeah, thirty seconds for you to give your ratings. Farang Travel says, "Oh my God, no." Um, Clive Everly says, uh, "Like this one, it's very vibrant." Uh, David Bone says, "Looks like a Flyby A330." Um, that's what I'm just. Uh, Rob Brown playing Spotting says, "I don't like Whisper Chocolate Bar livery." <laughs> Ooh. Can't go wrong with a whisper. <laughs> uh, Farang travels. Uh, whisper gold my eyes are bleeding. Probably a little bit harsh, <laughs> but that, again, that's opinions. That's all good. Uh, <laughs> zero one Tasker zero one says, "I just had vanilla cheesecake." You guys are like making me hungry with this cheesecake talk, man. <laughs> like cheesecake is my favorite. Um, <laughs> Jim Gamble says, pilot <laughs> pilot dressed in all black, climbing in through the cockpit windows. Probably in reference to the milk tray. <laughs> <laughs> um, never heard of this one. Uh, but Jack Rose says, wisps bars are getting demolished. That must be a foreign chocolate or something. Yeah, maybe. Never heard of a wisps. But uh, <laughs> also, whispers are a massive con. They're just full of little bubbles, which is just they're no, full of that. Don't, don't you no? Don't you don't you talk to me about whispers being a con? Well, they're just full of air, mate. I don't. No, know, I don't know. Not. not if yeah. you get the caramel one. Caramel was lovely. Oh, they do a new salted caramel. Incidentally, I haven't seen that out and oh, about yet. Lovely. Yeah, very nice salted caramel Twix as well. On yeah, point. if anyone anyone got them and wants to send them, just drop us a message <clears> and. We'll uh, give you a PO box uh, to send them to. That'd be appreciated. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a PO box, and if you want to give us some chocolate, yeah, go for it. Uh, <laughs> send it to us. <laughs> Ian Hartley says, "Can you mention the Freddo?" Uh, it depends, <laughs> depends if you want to lose your monetization or not. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd play the video, but I don't think I'd, I'd, I kind of want to keep the monetization for the channel. Yeah, um, and Caitlin went off on one about Freddo <laughs> being so expensive. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think we both appointment with uh, with Fredo, that's for sure. I think most of the nation share the, the same thing. I remember ten pence. Yeah, you used to go to school like fifty p, knowing you could go like to the shop and buy five of them. Now you can barely buy one. It's a bloody rip off. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Right, uh, let's go for the ratings um, as everyone gets their chocolate ratings in. <laughs> Everyone's just talking about different. <laughs> yes, it's good. I don't know. Uh, yeah, Jim Gemmell sums it up quite easily. Aviation live streams usually end up chatting about food or booze. <laughs> so if we did it the other way around where we talked about food or booze, would that mean like a lot of aviation chat would get uh, get said if we did it the other way around? Maybe. Incidentally, I've got coffee-flavoured Guinness tonight. It's absolutely beautiful in your local <laughs> shops. It's a treat. <laughs> oh, dearie me. <clears throat> We'll just we'll do an aviation themed food style review show. Why not? All these ideas now that just come into my head. Let's do the ratings then. So, um, Caitlin, uh, out of ten, what do you give this one? Um, I think it's nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Good shout, uh, Steve. Um, I will give it a solid ten out of ten. Loves it. Loves it. I'll give it. I think I'll give it a 9.5, I Ooh. think, which I think is smack down in the middle of what we've given it. So 9.5 out of 10, which I think is still a very good score. Yep, Let's have a look and see what everyone put. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Jim Gemmell just raised a good point. The TDL Reacts channel end up chatting about aviation, probably. Uh, <laughs> but we, I will say something about that channel at the end of the show. So, uh, yeah, stay stay for that one. Yeah. Um, David, just, this is what it's like now. Eddie Had's new dairy milk class is popular. Yeah. Um, but ratings wise, Michael Painter gives it an 8 out of 10. Um, Jim Gemmell gives it a 7. <clears throat> um, yeah, zero one, 01, Tasker zero one's one's on the same level as me. Don't diss whispers. <laughs> I'm not dissing them. I'm just saying there's a lot of air for your money. I do like a whisper. Don't 
Don't hate you want, me. If you want air for your money, you're looking at arrows. Oh, uh, yeah. Bo. Can't go wrong. Orange one's quite nice as well. Uh, Transatlantic Allison gives it a 3.30 out of 10 uh, while I eat my Magnum ice cream. Oh, gee. What one? What yeah. One? I want to know which one. Double caramel is the is the beast. That's oh, the one you yeah. need to be telling you us. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Or a nice white chocolate one. Yeah. White chocolate magnum or a nice double caramel. If you come at us and say you've got the vegan without. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so, Steve, if one day you wake up and your tea tastes like eye drops. Um <laughs> Rob Brown playing sporting says, saying that I like pickled onion monster munch, six out of ten. <laughs> 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 oh dear. <laughs> uh, Ian goes, I'll give it 30p change from a quid, uh, like a Freddo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack Rolls gives it the 25th of December. It's spectacular, just like Christmas. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, see, look, Alison, look, she she knows, like white chocolate. Oh. Yeah, lovely. Well done. Yeah, oh, lovely. You can stay. Choice. You're welcome Very to stay good. now. <laughs> Very good choice. That's why I love this show, because you can talk about aviation and actually just go off off the track a little bit. So very good. All right, let's go on to <clears throat> the next one. We'll do a few more. A nice, interesting one here uh, to do with uh, Turkish Airlines. Mm -hmm. Um, and, of course, promoting the country of Turkey. Um, quite an interesting design, actually. Uh, definitely a, a, a different colour from what they're used to with the red. Um, why did you pick this one, Caitlin? Um, I think it really shows off the culture of Turkey. And I really like the design. And it really like shows off the colours of Turkey. like um, Similar to the eye, the Turkish eye. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Very good shout, that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Steve, over to you. Yeah, back in the back in the good old days, my grandma used to knit um, a quilt and give them away, and that's exactly what it reminded me of. So uh, it was a nostalgic moment. It reminded me of a quilt, all a little bit, kind of uh, a lot going on, but still beautifully made, and someone would appreciate them. It is a bit like a, a Turkish quilt. Yeah. But it's quite stylish at the same time. Although, now, now that I've read the comment, I now can't unsee it, which is Alison's comment. Yeah. What's with all the QR codes all over it? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it works if I scan one. Yeah, see what happens. Let's just see. Hang on. Let's do a quick, uh, a quick test. No. I can officially confirm... They are not QR codes. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I, I like it. It's not too bad. Uh, obviously, it does its job in promoting Turkey. I think the Turkey wording could be slightly darker. Yeah. See, if I, think... I was promoting Turkey, I'd have some pigs and blankets and stuffing, but each to their own. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, here we go again. That's Christmas dinner. It's like one of the best dinners of, like, the year. Yeah, you're not wrong there. Yeah, very good. Very nice with a nice limoncello spritz. <laughs> if you ever want to take me out and get me drunk very quickly, that's the one drink I can have. I'm going to take about two and I'm gone. And I'm not a lightweight either. Um, anyway, away from that. Now getting on to drink and booze. Um, right, 30 seconds for you guys to think about the uh, rating for the livery. Um, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we'll go into the comments. Ian with a very childish comment saying, white chocolate is for kids under five. You haven't lived, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gail Leary loves this livery. Uh, so too does Clive Everly. Um, a really good shout from uh, the guy whose name I'm not butchering. Says he prefers a classic 90s Cathay, Cathay Pacific livery, which is quite a nice one, actually. If those don't know um, that one, give <laughs> could uh, could someone mute Ian, please? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How dare you call me a lightweight? I am not a lightweight. 
Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, that, that classic 90s Cathay Pacific green livery, spot on that. Um, uh, let's have a look here as well. Some other sort of... Uh, as we were talking about Christmas dinner, very quickly, Jack Roll says, Brussels sprouts, yes or no? It's a yes from me. Steve? Um, I'm not massively taken on it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to give it a, a straight... Si oh, sorry. Brussels sprouts, yes or no? Sorry. Brussels sprouts, yes or no? Oh, no, absolutely not. They're like little mini cabbages and they make you make your fart smell <laughs> funny. <laughs> Oh dear. Caitlin, yes or no on Brussels sprouts quickly? No. No. All right. Fair enough. Just me then. Yeah, I like little bombs waiting to go off. That's the thing. Yeah. But uh, but yes. Right. Uh, so ratings out of 10 for this one. Caitlin, over to you. Um, I'll give it 8.5. 8.5. Very solid. 8.5. Steve, over to you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It's going to be a, a half play five for me this one. Uh, I'll happily go for a. I think I'm going to go for. I mean, I, do, I quite like it, so I'm going to go for a seven. For Steve's very low score. It's probably the lowest scoring one so far, of six point five out of ten. Mm. So. Uh, let's have a look and see about the chat. Clive Everly gives it a 9 out of 10. Uh, zero, 01 Tasker zero, 01 says 2 out of 10. Uh, Michael Painter says 8 out of 10. Looks like a posh MS gift wrap paper. Which it kind of does. Yeah, it kind of does. I think I'm pretty sure I've seen something like that as well. Uh, Rob Brown playing spotting 5 out of 10. Ian saying that he's a mod. Uh, I don't care. You can still get muted. Um, uh, Link Cable uh, Keeble says 6.5 out of 10, so agrees with us. Jim Gamble, 5 out of 10. Uh, Ian's uh, rating for Sprouts, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Lots of people just going yes or no now for like <laughs> food. It's gone back to food. We had like a, a short spell of like not talking about food. And now we're like back into it. Um, yeah, four, 4 out of 10, Ian says, for the livery. Um David Bone says Sprouts get a strong 25th of December. Um, yeah, just it's literally gone back to food. Lynn Keeble loves Sprouts for Christmas dinner. Ian says dried fruit, devil's food. Don't get him started on Glacier Cherries. <laughs> Don't get him started on it. Right. <clears throat> we'll do one more for now. Uh, and a better way to uh, to sort of wrap up the, the segment with uh, Singapore Airlines and their 50th uh, anniversary livery, which I think was on a 777, 747, and uh, I think an A340 as well also wore this livery. Uh, how come you... Uh, sorry, how did you... I'll go again. Why did you pick this one, uh, Caitlin? I mean, Singapore Airlines are a really good airline. Um, I haven't flown on them, but I've heard they're good. And I think it's a really good way to celebrate... Um, their 50th anniversary. I think it's a very, I mean, the, the delivery they've got is very classy and it's very timeless as well. If you look back through the years from sort of like the, you know, 70s onwards and, I, you know, even the rarer planes like the 757, 727s and even like nowadays with the 737 Maxes and things like that, any aircraft that wears this livery is, is very, very smart and you've got a nice option in the background there with, of course, Triple seven in the main sort of picture background. You've got seven four sevens, and of course you've got an A three ten as well there as well. So that uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, it, it it's just a timeless. You know, there's not many timeless liveries out there that you know could go on forever without really needing a change. Um, but um, yeah, this definitely definitely goes up there with one of one of the nicest ones out there. Steve, over to you. Uh, what do you think of this one? Yeah, I. I, I quite like it i think it's um you've done and it's uh it's pretty classy looking it's given me uh caramel ice cream vibes just to give it a food analogy at the back end there oh dear but yeah no i, I do the engine cow when they've had a little bit of that gold go uh put the top hat on it but apart from that it's really good 
Very nice. Somebody, somebody in there said uh, it would make a great updated uh, Singapore livery. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, no, it does, it does look smart. It's, it's quite classy looking without being overbearing. Um, right, 30 seconds for you guys to think about uh, the uh, rating you would give this livery and then we'll... Uh, yeah, see where we go from there. But I'll have a look in the comments and see what people think of this one. So I, I'm just hearing something go over my house at the moment. And I'm pretty sure it's either a Hercules or an A400. Let me just do the old flight radar check. It's an A400 because it's got distinct how to it. Fair play. Right. Uh, so lots of people liking it. Clive Everly's liking it. Uh, Jim, yeah, Jim Gemmel was the uh, Jim Gemmel was the one that uh, said that it would make a great updated uh, Singapore livery. It probably would, you know, it probably would. Uh, Allison says, uh, like that, and seen it on the A three forty. It's beautiful. Um, I'll read it. Rob Brown playing support says, you know, a livery is bad when it offends you in the same way as your own farts. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Zero one Tasker zero one. Uh says some airlines just get it right, Virgin, Air Canada, and Singapore. I think that's very very classy. Um and uh Ian with a good uh, decent analogy actually looks okay, reminds me a bit of the dub livery that British Airways had on the three nineteens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Soap could have um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was gonna say, I've not seen that one before. Um, yeah, getting those vibes. I like the fact they've kept the tail the way it is as well. Yeah, quite cool. Very nice indeed. All right, uh, Caitlin, over to you uh, for your rating out of 10. Um, 10 out of 10. Bang on, 10 out of 10. Very good. Uh, Steve? Um, I will give it a German no. Uh, that'll be a nine. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got that one. And uh, yeah, I'll give it a nine as well. So overall, nine out of ten to finish off this one. Uh, let's have a look and see uh, what people have put in the chat. David Bone uh, gives it a ten out of ten. Uh, Link Keeble a ten out of ten. Uh, Gail Leary ten out of ten. Task zero zero uh, zero one says ten out of ten. Lots of people giving it 10s. Michael Painter, 9 out of 10. Clive Everly, 9 out of 10. Jim Gimble, 10 out of 10. Farang Travels with a 5 out of 10. And Rob Brown with a 2 out of 10. Very interesting. Ian with a 6. And, uh, yeah, lots of uh, lots of positive stuff. And that will do for that part of the show this evening. Um, of course, there are more liveries, so we may go through some more. Um, in fact, how many are there? Uh, still quite a few. Yeah, we can do them again at some stage, I'm sure. No doubt. But uh, yeah, uh, very yeah, well done for a nice selection of uh, of liveries there. And not one that uh, really sort of got people talking about hating it either. So very, yeah, good choices. Very good choices. Okie dokie. So uh, before we begin to wrap the show up, there's a little bit that we want to sort of talk about uh, before we do. Um, it's something that was requested to talk about, so we'll uh, we'll jump into that now. Uh, Caitlin, if you want to kind of get the ball rolling on uh, on what uh, what was requested to be spoken about. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, me suffering with anxiety. Um, yeah, um, I've been. You can tell I'm kind of nervous. I've I've put you on the spot here, haven't I? <laughs> But basically, uh, before before the show started, um, having spoken to uh, to Caitlin as well, I know she was very nervous, very anxious um, about coming on to uh, the show. Um, and of course, we want to sort of make it, uh, you know, raise its awareness uh, just very quickly. I know it's not aviation related, so you know, it's whether you know, other people are, are very sort of like we don't want to hear about it. It's like well, don't listen if that's the case. But uh, but yeah. Um, 
yeah, Caitlin, very, very nervous to come on the show. We sort of calmed her down and said, you know, it'd be absolutely fine, but we'll now raise, it, raise the awareness of anxiety and, of course, mental health at the same time, which I think is always worth a little bit of time to talk about. So, um, yeah, I, I will go offhand and say that you've done fantastic tonight. I think you've been brilliant. Yeah, no, absolutely. I second that for for your first time on. Like, even for... For people not suffering anxiety, coming on here is it's not a it's not an easy gig. Tom will Tom will tell you. I'll agree. When we first, well, when fir- Tom first started this, you listen back to the early episodes and you could you could hear the nerves in his voice. And likewise, when you listen to my early episodes, you could hear the, the nerves in my voice. So the fact you come on here and put yourself in front of like of all these people and that, and you you've done yourself and your mum proud and that, so you can you can. <laughs> go to bed happy that you've you've done a good job and you faced a fear tonight so absolutely like spot yeah. on to you i also think that i'm probably we're probably not the only ones that will say that i think people in the chat will probably agree that you've done really well tonight with uh, you know especially sort of the the anxious side of it as well um just let's have a quick talk about it i know you know people do sort of suffer from 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 the the anxiety and mental health and things like that what I mean, if you were to give people sort of advice and things like that now and kind of just, um, you know, just raise the awareness of it, what would you what would you tell the people that are watching? Um, it's like as a sufferer of anxiety myself, it's not easy. Um, like I was really nervous coming on here, but um, I knew that I would have people supporting me. And I think if you have people supporting you, it really helps you to cope with, it better yeah i think like tom would agree i I think we're incredibly lucky on this channel but everyone in the comments who's incredibly supportive of us it's incredibly rare that anyone says anything out of term and i think that that helps a lot when you've got such supportive people within our community but it makes makes doing this a lot easier like tom here myself we've all made mistakes and that on on air and people yeah gently rib you or whatever and it's kind of nice and it's part of part of it all but yeah like like i said earlier on you come on here you, you've not run away from it and that's uh that's an incredible thing to do when you're when you're suffering from from anxiety that's for sure absolutely i mean rob brown's put a hashtag in there of, of hang on, hashtag team caitlin and uh gail's put team caitlin t-shirt <laughs> you Don't can have your face out. on a t-shirt eh yeah i mean who'd, who'd want one steve who'd want one yeah <laughs> not me i'm wearing the paint yeah. on. <laughs> who'd, oh yeah, who'd want one you know yeah well yeah, very good get them um, while yeah. you can limited edition yeah limited edition going to go off after i think wednesday i think it's the last time you can buy the limited edition steve t-shirt or maybe towards the end of the week, I can't quite think. But um, yeah, lots of people. Like I've been showing it on screen as you were talking there, Caitlin. Lots of people, very you know, very complimentary towards you. Um, and yeah, I think this this here from Jim Gemmel kind of sums it up, saying, "Gotta agree, Caitlin has done fantastic tonight. Deserves a big round of applause." So yeah, so very well done to you um, for, for like I say overcoming. It's not easy. It's not easy to overcome nerves. Um, but uh yeah lots of people just yeah just throwing in their their you know <laughs> their, their two pence there Ian, ian's just put a nice interesting comment in there but i'll you go go through some of these ones david bone really enjoyed hearing caitlin's take on the liveries well done caitlin remember the aviation community loves to hear everyone's views and you were really entertaining and informative um transatlantic allison says if you can do this and talk to the world online you can do anything and never let anyone say you can't best bit of advice that uh, you can get i think especially from uh, from allison so yeah very good um ian of course with his cheeky cheeky ways his deliveries might have been a bit sketchy but caitlin gets the message <laughs> well done so yeah absolutely wonderful um yeah, lots of people just yeah, just throwing their nice compliments in there. So yeah, I think you've done a fantastic job. Um, and like Alison says, if you can do this, you can pretty much do everything. And you know, you start off nervous, like Steve said. Steve was nervous when he did his uh, his his show, 
Um, I was nervous to start it off, and you can tell, and then you know, just your confidence will grow, and then it will just become second nature to you. So, yeah, hopefully this will have helped you, and you know, helped a lot of people out to say, well, if, if you know, have you as a bit of an inspiration, really, if if you can do it, then then I can do it, sort of thing, and that's kind of the role that we're going for, yeah, is that you know, if, if people that are suffering can do it, and they can get themselves into a position where they can face their fears, and you know, then they, then anyone else can do it themselves if they you know put a lot of effort into it, and you know, give them that drive and determination that uh, will, will help them get there. So yeah, so definitely. Uh, yeah, definitely a big credit to you for, uh, for for doing the show tonight. Thank you. No yeah. problem at all. But no, let's check in that well done. No worries. No worries at all. Right, so uh, with the fact that we have that out of the way, I know it's a quick one, but we had to kind of just raise the awareness there and, you know, not everybody's got the confidence in that. We are going to go on to some shout-outs um, as we start to wrap the show up. Of course, this is where we shout-out... Um, uh, shout out family, friends, loved ones, whoever you really please to, to, to shout out. List can be as long, but I don't want to go down, make a cup of tea and come back and still find you giving shout outs seven minutes later. <laughs> somebody. Um, but um, yeah, this is the part. And of course, everyone in the chat can do their shout outs as well. Um, so if you have any shout outs in the chat, we'll show them uh, on screen. Um, yeah, well... Uh... <laughs> We'll uh, yeah, show them on the screen as as we happen to receive them. So, Caitlin, we'll go with you first, as we've put you on the spot so many times this evening. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, if you'd like to give some shout-outs. So, shout-out to you and Steve um, for being brilliant, as always. Um, shout-out to Ian and his pizza. <laughs> <laughs> shout-out to um, my mum and Jack and everyone in the chat as well for supporting me, friends and family. Alison's not wrong, actually. I've just, I've read the comment there. In <laughs> fact, I think you did so well. I think Ian's place might be at risk. <laughs> it's what you get for ditching us for pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt uh, any more or you, you done with that? Uh, I think I'm done. <laughs> You think you're done. If you've got any more and you can think of any more, just jump in at any time. It's not a problem. All right, Steve, over to you. Yeah, lovely job. Um, Caitlin, Gail, and Jack moderating in the chat. Uh, Ian for, for joining us. And uh, there was a, a colossally massive birthday this week. So uh, it is a huge to uh, young Tian Hartley, who was uh, celebrating her birthday during the week. So, uh, have a, oh, yeah. have a happy birthday. I hope your dad gets you something nice. Steve, if I put so, you, uh, if I make you big on the screen, can you do the usual uh, what we do? Of, you know, seeing as it is a birthday, so you may as well see what curtains you got up. Oh, yeah, right enough. Yeah, go on then. Hang on. Go for it. Beautiful. There we go. Birthday curtains. Birthday curtains. Can't go wrong. Awesome. Out anyone in Canada this week because they're back, so uh, no Canada shout outs. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> other than that, I'm, I'm all done. No, fantastic. Uh, I'll do some shout outs very quickly. Um, Steve, of course, for doing a, a great job as, as, as always, um, as, as the co host of the show. Uh, like Caitlin, for yeah, like I say, face your fears and stuff, it's not easy, but you, yeah. I'll, I'll keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. You uh, you, know, you did a fantastic job in, in doing that. So hopefully this has helped you uh, going forward um, with with your confidence in that. Um, so, yeah, so well, well done to you. Uh, of course, moderator Gail in the chat, of course, working uh, hard this evening to get everything that we uh, that we sort of promote into the chat and doing a good job on uh, you know, muting people that kind of deserve it. Um, and... Uh, yeah, Ian, for, for being in North Wales and still finding the time to actually find Signal uh, to, to join us. Um, so, yeah, so very good uh, indeed. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll second what Steve said with the uh, um, the birthday wishes to young Tian Harley um, for, for the week. So, uh, yeah, big happy birthday to you for, the, uh, for during the week. Right. 
Now, so next week, um, well, we were supposed to have this two weeks ago, and I will play this again. Um, and I'm told that this will definitely happen this week because we rearranged it. Uh, but here's who we have next week. Hi, everyone. Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. I am so excited to be joining Tom and the gang for the Departure Lounge podcast next week. We're going to be talking about travel, aviation, trains, whatever comes up, all kinds of stuff. I really hope you can join us. I am so looking forward to seeing you next Sunday. It's the rearranged show from two weeks ago. Uh, so Jeb Brooks will be joining us uh, definitely this time uh, next Sunday. Um, so we yeah, are looking forward to hearing all about, as we said two weeks ago, all about his travels um, and of course his stories and aviation and of course what he's been up to since the last time that he was on the show. Um, should that change, we'll again put you in the notice. It depends on, you know, I think last time it was delayed because of his, his uh, sorry, we delayed the show because his flight was delayed so he wouldn't have made it back in time. So fingers crossed this time, you know, we'll be able to get him on. But as far as I'm concerned, it's confirmed, it's in the book, it's ready to go. So Jeb Brooks will be joining us for a second time next week, uh, next Sunday, 7.30pm. Right, all that's left for us to do uh, is to say our goodbyes. When we say our goodbyes, I forgot to mention this, Caitlin, don't go anywhere. We'll have a quick chat after the show. Um, but uh, yeah, if you, yeah, let's say our goodbyes. So let's go with Caitlin first, if you'd like to say uh, goodbye to everybody. Um, thank you for having me on the show and... It was a pleasure to be here, and yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Steve, in the most Steve way possible, uh, if you'd like to say goodbye to the people, lovely people, uh, who are still... <laughs> Alison beat you to it. Um, <laughs> You probably steal that line, but uh, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, if you'd like to say goodbye to those still watching. All right. Cheerio, my lovely safe. Stay sexy and time to raid the fridge. All right. Have a good <laughs> week and we will catch you soon. Cheerio. Brilliant. Love that. Fantastic. All that's left for me to say is thank you very much for everyone uh, for, for joining us this evening for episode 73, 74 will be quite interesting indeed uh, next Sunday, 7.30pm uh, here on the channel, and we may be elsewhere as well. But that's a shh, that's a shush moment. Um, oh, just very quickly, the second channel, uh, I think we believe we are scrapping the reaction channel. We've had a talk about it as a team, and we think right now is probably not the best time to have that. So we are scrapping the idea for the second channel at the moment. Um, whether it will come back or not, I don't know. So we're going to scrap that for the time being. But uh, have a fantastic week. Uh, continue to look after yourselves, uh, stay safe, and have a wonderful week. Whatever you do, take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Wrong bloody thing. <laughs>